So I wanted to talk about infrared cameras. Um, they might be of this kind, uh, where it's all self-contained. You have a display in the back. Uh, it might be one of these little ones uh, that I recently did a video on that connects to your um, smartphone. So what kind of sensor do they use? How do these things work, right? You're not detecting light, you're detecting heat. Um, it's kind of an odd thing. So wh what's it, what do these sensors look like, okay? And so I wanted to talk a little bit today about microbolometers. That's what I believe is inside these cameras, microbolometers. So let's talk a little bit about um, wavelengths, okay? So first let's talk about the sun. The sun's a big hot object, okay? And so if you plot uh, sort of the intensity, intensity of the light versus wavelength, okay? The sun's going to do the sun's going to do something like this, and it will have a peak. It will have a peak wavelength. It'll have some wavelengths that are shorter. It'll have some wavelengths that are longer. And uh, this is also what's known as the black body curve, or the um, not the black body curve, but the uh, black body radiation. Um, and um, there's a Planck equation that is used to draw this graph. I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to look at the peaks, okay? So the peak of, oops, nanometers. The peak of the sun is at 555 nanometers, okay? So humans see, we can see down to about 400 nanometers, and we can see up to about 700 nanometers. That's the visible wavelength, okay? The sun has, rays that are longer in wavelength and shorter in wavelength, um, but that's what a human can see, all right? So when we go outside and we feel the warm sun, we're actually kind of feeling this infrared. So this is visible, and this is ultraviolet, and this is IR, okay? Um, and so what about a tungsten light bulb, okay? A, uh, a tungsten light bulb has a curve that maybe looks something like this. It's, it's, it's longer, okay? So it may have a peak here around a thousand nanometers, okay? And that's above that we can see. So tungsten light bulbs actually generate more heat than they do visible light. And that's why LED technology for light bulbs is really, really good, because you're not wasting that energy as heat. You're putting all that energy into the visible spectrum and trying to fit everything inside the visible spectrum, because that's where it's the most efficient. People talk about watts per, me uh, watts per watt, sorry, watts per watt. So what does watts per watt mean? It means for one watt of electrical power, how many watts of optical power do you get, right? And so that's all about that. All right, so what about these sensors though for IR? Okay, are they looking at a thousand nanometers? Are they looking farther out? There's something called near infrared and far infrared and, and things like that, okay? So let's take a look at what we want to be able to see with these IR cameras, okay? If you look at pictures, um, you're looking at things that maybe aren't too hot, like your hand, okay? Even though an IR camera can see your hand or even the uh, fingerprints of your hand after it leaves the page, it, it leaves some heat behind and, and it can see that. Um, what is that wavelength? What is the wavelength of light that comes from your hand just due to heat, okay? So, well, we are 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 37 degrees centigrade, which is 310 degrees Kelvin, okay? So 310 degrees Kelvin. How hot is the sun? Well, it's 5,000 Kelvin. How hot is the tungsten light bulb? It's 2,700 uh, Kelvin. We're only 310 Kelvin, okay? So we need to we need to see that. Well, what way we saw that this wavelength was around 555 nanometers. 
This one was around a thousand nanometers. Okay, a little bit longer. What about 310, okay? What about 310? Well, there's a formula. This is a simple formula I'm gonna use. I think it came before Planck developed his equation. But this is called the, uh, the Wine's Law. Wine's Law. Uh, is it I before E or E after I? Anyway, Wine's Law. <laughs> I might have the I and the E backwards. Um, and it says that the peak wavelength, okay, is equal to the sum constant divided by its temperature. And the constant is uh, 2898 micro micrometers, microns, uh, let's see here, micrometers, uh, degrees Kelvin temperature, okay, so it's, I didn't write that word, but it's basically micrometers, Ks, okay, so the units are micrometer Kelvin, and if you divide that by Kelvin, you end up with micrometers, okay? So what do we have? Well, we have 310. So if you have 2, 8, 9, 8, and you divide that by 310, uh, you need a calculator. All right, let's see here. 2, 8, 9, 8 divided by 310 is 9.3 microns. Okay, we could do it with our 2700 bulb, 2998, 2700, that's 1073, so that works. And if we divide this by 2898, divide it by the pit temperature of the sun, let's say it's 5000 degrees, we get 579 uh, nanometers, which is, so it all checks out, okay? So wine, uh, has this equation and so this is the wavelength that we would like our camera to be able to see 9.3 microns it's very long in wavelength it's, it's infrared um, way way out there it's, it's almost 10 times 10 times more heat than <laughs> or 10 times more wavelength than than something that's hot like 27 uh, a, a tungsten light bulb so it's, it's it's way out there anyway i'm kind of rambling here all right, so how do we see this? What, what technology do we have? Can we use silicon? What, 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 can we, what can we use? What material can we use to see this, okay? Well, we're gonna use a resistor, okay? We're gonna use a resistor R. And there will be some delta R for some delta temperature, there will be some type of resistor that its resistance will change depending on its temperature, okay? And so what we want to use, we want to use these resistors. And then when we shine light on them, okay, we're gonna shine, shine light on them, they get hotter and their resistance changes. And we say, ah, that's something hotter. And, um, how much power are we going to be having? Well, it's very, very little power. These things need to be pretty, pretty sensitive. Um, humans are about a 100 watt light bulb, okay? At any point in time, you are shining about 100 watts of, of power, okay? It's heat. You're giving off about 100 watts of heat um, at any one point in time. And uh, that's for the entire body. So uh, just one, milli square, one square millimeter of skin is not gonna be giving off much power at all. It's gonna be teeny, teeny, tiny, and it's gonna be far away, and it's gonna be captured with a camera. So this thing has to be super, super sensitive. All right, so now let's do a thought experiment. Let's say, okay, I wanna build a heat sensor, and I'm gonna use a resistor. I'm just gonna build one in my garage. How would I do that? Well, I get myself a, I get myself a resistor, okay, and I get myself some electronics, and I'll 
and I'll measure the I'll measure the voltage here and then I'll heat it up and you can say well the room's going to heat it up too I'm, I'm not much warmer than the room okay so we need to isolate it from the room we need to isolate it from the ambient how how do we do that well uh let's put it in some glass okay i'm going to put it in some glass and i'm going to have some wires coming out of the glass now heat can't get in because there's a vacuum in here okay well, that looks like a light bulb doesn't it maybe we can use a light bulb as a as a temperature sensor um and so yeah so we can do something like that and we can say okay well i'm going to make another one that's even fancier i'm going to have my i'm going to have my glass and i'm going to come in here and then i'm going to have this long piece of wire and a resistor and another long piece of wire and then it comes out because heat can come in the wires right and so you need to have these long wires before you get to the resistor and then long wires before you get out and then the temperature can't creep in from the out from the outside world okay all right so that sounds good we can build we can build a sensor well guess what this is one pixel okay oh that's one pixel hmm this camera has 256 by I think it's 192 okay that's a lot of pixels and it's got to go into a tiny tiny little tiny tiny little thing it, it's it's not very big okay and so these little tiny resistors need to be super tiny they need to be tiny 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 little resistors but the resistors need to have long wires on them and they need to be in a vacuum so how do you do that how would you how would you build such a thing okay and that's what's known as the microbolometer uh, so a microbolometer is i'll show you a picture here because I'm, I'm not gonna be able to draw it so the microbolometer is made out of silicon and it's what's known as micro machining okay and micro machining is that you can make 3d things in silicon you can kind of have little bridges and gears and all kinds of stuff in 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 silicon and what they do is they suspend these little platforms with the long wires and then on those little platforms they put little resistors okay so you basically have little resistor and long wire and then the whole chip is going to be encapsulated and it's going to be kind of a vacuum so it won't be able to get any temperature from the outside okay and then you need to get light or actually you need to get heat into this thing and yeah so that's the way they build microbolometers they're they're quite clever little devices and uh, then you can build a whole bunch of them in a tiny tiny little chip and uh, you can have something that that is sensitive to heat around nine microns these little microbolometers i think are sensitive probably between i'm guessing but i think they're between eight and 12 microns they'll, they'll detect heat in that range and uh, then you need to have a lens and you can't use glass because heat doesn't go through glass nine microns does not go through glass um, and so they use materials like uh, germanium and uh, germanium is transparent at nine microns um, so anyway just a quick introduction to how these little cameras work and um, you can imagine there's a whole bunch of circuitry to put these little resistors into bridges you basically need to add, put them inside of a bridge so you can get really really precise measurements and so you have to have you know 50,000 electrical bridges to do a, a pixelated device and then you have to have a whole bunch of ADDs and an image processing and then you have to whole, have a whole bunch of digital processing to calibrate the thing and uh, yeah there's a whole bunch of science involved.